We asked our viewers to pick the hottest games they've been playing and we're going to count down the ones that received the most viewer votes of next in this month's People's Choice Top 10. Hello, I'm Matthew Jude, here with my plucky pint-sized Paula Deming sidekick. Hello, I'm Paula Deming, here with my mercurial, mutantly-sized Matthew Jude sidekick. And as the official host of my People's Choice video, I'll start the countdown this month with Ashes Reborn, Rise of the Phoenixborn. Released this year, it's a revamp of the original Ashes game from 2015 with the same cards, but modified for the sake of clarity and balance. Kind of like how we're modifying this video with me. You know, for the sake of clarity and balance. The game's publisher, Plaid Hat Games, estimates that around 30% of all the cards across all expansions have been modified. So, did the massive undertaking to revise this entire game from the ground up pay off? Viewer Vincent V thinks so, saying, This game only gets better and better with each playthrough, and has one of the best communities I've ever seen. And Gabriel L adds, I would like to know more about this new version. And viewer Matty J says, Some things don't need to be changed, and were fine just the way they were. Like People's Choice video. It's always been the People's Choice video. It was ne it's never been changed before. But when it comes to the new version of Ashes, We've got you covered there, Gabriel, because our very own Rodney Smith, who created a tutorial for the original Ashes, has also posted an updated tutorial covering everything you need to know about this new version and how to play it. And the game I'd like to know more about is the one that's sponsoring the first half of today's episode, and I have a sneaking suspicion our very own Chaz Marla has more on that now. Thanks, Matthew. This episode is made possible in part by limited edition gaming accessories from Upper Deck. This line of gaming accessories features fan favorite Marvel superheroes and villains on card sleeves. Oh, so many card sleeves. You got your Spider-Man, you got your Ms. Marvel, Black Panther, Black Widow, Wolverine, Venom, and so many more. In fact, there's even Thor on a little unicorn, which I don't have, and that makes me very sad. But where are you going to put all your cards that are in these card sleeves once you start to play? Well, there's also a variety of play mats, including, but not limited to, Wolverine being vicious, Spider-Man being spidery, and Thanos generally giving the Avengers a difficult afternoon. These and more gaming accessories, which are available at local game stores and through the link in this video's description to UpperDeckStore.com, can be used with any game, but especially with Upper Deck's Legendary and the Versus System two-player card game. Hint, hint. Our next crowdsourced selection is Inish, a game deeply rooted in Celtic history and lore, in which players win by being elected king of the island of Inish. Players can try to achieve one of three different victory conditions. Fighting, friendship, or taking your ball and going home, because I didn't want to play with you anyway. And I've got a Nintendo. Bet you didn't know that. And no, you can't come over and play it. And while Inish does feature a variety of military units taking territories on a map, this may be why viewer Spinner71 suggests that Inish is so good at four players. The general consensus is that it's a rookie mistake to employ a conflict-centric strategy because eliminating other clans reduces a player's chances of scoring a leadership victory condition. And that's going to require adding a little diplomacy into your approach. May I please come over and play Nintendo? Yes, you may come over and play my Nintendo. Thank you for asking so nicely. I'm sorry I got upset about our and game. And now you sweep in and crush them with military. What? when their defences are down. Oh, I left my defences down. And Henry W mentions that Inish, first published in 2016, is still his favourite area control game, even though his kids prefer Kemet. And when better to sweep in with a military victory when everyone else is playing Kemet. And they didn't even know they were still playing a game of Inish the whole time. Oh, yeah. defences, defences are, are down. down. I don't know how we're going to time this. Did you high five the same way I hit? Was it? We didn't plan this enough. The next democratically decided game on this month's list is Distilled, a highly thematic strategy card game about crafting spirits in a distillery with resource management and push your luck elements. The game begins just after players have each inherited their own distillery. Must be nice! And all hoping to someday achieve the title of Master Distiller by creating the world's 
most renowned spirits. Viewer Sea Raptor, who I'm going to assume is an actual Sea Raptor, voted for this game because of its, quote, amazing theme, fun mechanics. Can't wait to get this one on the table. But you may want to play Distilled in moderation. After seeing Tony K's slurred assessment of the game, whiskey, booze, board games, three wonderful words. <laughs> Next up on the people's list is Brass Birmingham, an economic strategy game sequel to Brass, designed by Martin Wallace in 2007. Brass Birmingham tells the story of competing entrepreneurs in Birmingham during the Industrial Revolution, and as in its predecessor, players must develop, build and establish their industries and network in an effort to exploit low or high market demands. Viewer Han W alliteratively asserts, this game brilliantly brings beer and Birmingham's boom to brass, bestowing a bonus boost in the board game rankings. Hey, why do I always get the lines with alliteration? Well, because that's like kind of a sidekick job, you know? Yeah, that's why I asked. Because you're the sidekick. But am I? Am I though? Brian cast his vote for Brass Birmingham this month saying, because it's amazing. You know what else is amazing? You, as my sidekick. See. This is why you can't get a sidekick, and you have to play solo. <laughs> you mean get to play solo? <laughs> Moving on from spirits to a game based on non-alcoholic beverages, we have Coffee Traders. Set in the 1970s, farmers from around the globe harvest the delicious Arabica coffee beans. And, nope, we're starting that over again. Oh, delicious. It's delicious coffee. It's so good. This coffee's so good. Moving on from spirits to a game based on non-alcoholic beverages, we have Coffee Traders. Set in the 1970s, farmers from around the globe. I shouldn't do it like that because you'll put you'll put it in. Oh yes. Yes, I will. Set in the 1970s, farmers from around the globe harvest the delicious Arabica coffee beans and sell them to coffee roasters, large and small, far and wide. Work with your competitors to develop the best regions for beans while keeping a watchful eye on the market. Carlos D filled in his ambitiously announced blend of words with, I love the idea of being a merchant, but instead of failing at doing so in real life, I can kind of succeed at it in game form. You know how I like my failure? mixed with a lot of milk and sugar, so it doesn't taste so bitter. And Andy L voted for coffee traders while proclaiming, I love coffee, who doesn't love coffee? Coffee, 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 coffee. Hey, it's your favorite lovable quirky city back at it again. Santa Monica? No. Klamath Falls. That's not even like remotely close. Well, it can't be Tallahassee. It could be Tallahassee. It isn't. I mean, it could be Wet Squirrel, Nebraska, for all I know. The actual city is Machi Koro 2, which I know because I'm not a sidekick. In Machi Koro 2, new adventures await, and veteran players will notice some big changes. Under the new zoning laws, players receive a limited budget to choose their own starting establishments. The available cards are pulled from three decks and arranged for all to see. It's a race to grab the coolest new establishments and landmarks in town. With more variety than ever before, no two games will be the same. Viewers Tyler and Aaron, who I'm pretty sure live in Wet Screw on Nebraska, say, We love Machi Koro, and we like Machi Koro Legacy. I'm sure we'll love Machi Koro too, too. And Stephen F. ponders, It's Machi Koro, but two. Does that mean twice as many bad rolls? Is that possible? No, not if you're Paula. She already rolls like a sidekick. Well, that is true. I'm pint-sized enough to admit that. But what is possible is another appearance from Chaz with a word from the sponsor of the second part of this episode. Oh, that's right. This episode's also made possible by the one-on-one -on -one dungeon crawler, Keepers of the Quest Star from Upper Deck, in which players can challenge each other as both the brave adventurers and the cunning quest master. What? Am I telling me that you can not only delve deep into dangerous dungeons filled with magic and mayhem, but also design quests full of dangerous monsters and clever traps for your rivals to explore? Yes, I do believe that's what I'm saying. So take your place among the elite legends of lore and either protect or discover the unrivaled treasure known as Questar, or Questy to its friends. Launch your next dungeon crawling campaign with Keepers of the Questar, available at your local friendly game store, and by following the other link in this video's description to Upper Deck's online store. 
return to the mysterious island of Arnok with an X game that our viewers voted for, the Expedition Leaders Expansion for the Lost Ruins of Arnok. Give your expedition an edge with one of six unique leaders, each equipped with different abilities, skills, and starting decks that offer different strategies and styles of play to discover. In addition to the leader's abilities, which bring a new element of asymmetry to the game, this expansion contains alternative research tracks that offer even more variety and a bigger challenge, along with new item and artifact cards to create new combos and synergies. The board gamer's favorite word, synergies. Gets me all excited just saying it. Polyomino, orthogonal, tableau. Is it any wonder why viewer Andy L can't wait for this expansion? And Rich Plays Board Games is also looking forward to it, saying, this expansion sounds exciting and sounds like it will add more to the experience. And our favorite Nebraskaweegians, Tyler and Aaron, who I did, we surprised to see this game didn't win the Kennish Spiel. But great game, and we're looking forward to future expeditions. Dude Ranch Desperados does not feature on this month's list, but the fourth edition of Twilight Imperium does. This is a game of galactic conquest in which three to six players take on the role of one of 17 factions vying for galactic domination through military might, political maneuvering, and economic bargaining. Every faction offers a completely different play experience, from the wormhole hopping ghosts of Kreis to the Emirates of Hakan, masters of trade and economics. I didn't understand uh, uh, even a bit of that. I don't even know if I said it right. There's like a line in the mix. How did they get into space? With their little paws. I mean, Carlos D stated that, quote, I have been eagerly awaiting playing this. It seems to be abound with complex decisions without being overcomplicated to learn. And Henry W adds, I'll be playing this on my birthday in October. Everyone is invited, but costumes are required. I would love to see that, if I'm honest, Henry, but sadly my invitation is yet to arrive. So, may I please come over and play. Oh, maybe this will perk you up, Matthew. Viewer Spinner71 used his vote to congratulate his opponent, Jim, on his first victory. That does help. Yeah, thank you. Oh, don't thank me. Thank Spinner71. Or perhaps Jim. Yeah, Jim really did the heavy lifting here. Good old Jim. Now that's a trusty sidekick. Conflict spreads across the Imperium in Dune Imperium Rise of Ix, the first expansion to the award-winning board game and the second most voted for game on this month's list. This expansion adds several new features to the game, such as introducing three new great houses with unique leader abilities, technological innovations that offer strategic advantages, fearsome dreadnoughts to rule the skies, and a new epic game mode for a more intense, high-stakes challenge. With all that, it's no surprise that viewer Josh K mentioned a lot of people claim this game continues to rise in their ranking the more they play, so adding an expansion just made sense to continue this hype. Excited to also finally see the Dune movie when it's released later this year. Wait, is Kevin Bacon going to be in this one as well? Mm-hmm. And the game that most viewers cast their ballot for this month is Gloom Holden, an 18-card, no-table-needed version of the industrial-grade game Gloomhaven. And Gloom Holden, by contrast, can be played completely within one's hand being as compact and as portable as like a lucky penny or some type of small skunk. But what about spoilers? Does Gloomholden reveal Gloomhaven spoily secrets? Why, no need to worry. Those who haven't played Gloomhaven reportedly won't be spoiled on much. The name and the artwork for a number of monsters and items from Gloomhaven are present in Gloomholden, but Holden has its own plotline, allowing Haven's campaign details to remain a secret. Josh K confides in us that Gloomhaven is my favorite game of all time, and as I sit here twiddling my thumbs waiting for Frosthaven, I'd love to get in some fresh Gloomhaven gameplay, and its compact nature, count me in. Hoping for an official printing though. Please Isaac. Oh, thank you for asking nicely Josh K. And Stephen A simply adds that Gloomholding sounds gloriously ridiculous. Not unlike much of this video. Thanks, and we'll see you next time. Thanks. And we'll see you next time. Thanks, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, and we'll see you next time. We'll see you next time. Thanks, and we'll see you next time. We'll see you. Thanks, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, and we'll see you next time. <sighs>
those two little lovable sidekicks may think they're the ones in charge, but really, I'm the one calling the shots around here. So, thanks, and we'll see you next... Hi, Rodney. Hey, Chaz. How's the editing of the People's Choice coming along? I'm working on it right now. I'll, I'll have it done right away, sir. Of course, sir. Y y y yes, sir. Thanks for seeing you next time.